Recently, this problem appeared in the CBSC released practice paper 2022-23. Answer provided was 9.7 volts without solution. If you look at its solution elsewhere, every solution has tried to justify this answer. And the argument was, as the cut-in voltage of germanium is a smaller 0.3 volts and hence current should flow through the germanium and now as the potential drop is 0.3 volts and hence the leftover potential at this point got to be 9.7 volts. Of course, I disagree with the argument and hence this video. For the analysis purpose, I need to redraw it. See it carefully. Now I guess it is done. It is given in the problem that the potential drop across germanium is 0 0.3 volt and the potential drop across the silicon is 0 0.7 volts. Now see, argument is because the germanium and the silicon they are in parallel. So the potential drop across germanium and the silicon should be same but is not the case and hence I thought I should be reviewing this problem once again. This anomaly, if you think so, it could be resolved provided you consider a resistance forward bias resistance in series with the germanium as well as forward bias resistance in series with the silicon resistor. I have also done a video and the link to this video has been given in the description. Assume this to be R1 and R2. Now let us proceed with the solution taking forward bias resistance R1 of germanium and forward bias resistance R2 of silicon into consideration. For the analysis purpose, I need to redraw it. See it carefully. Now I guess it is done. It is given in the problem that the potential drop across germanium is 0 0.3 volt and the potential drop across the silicon is 0 0.7 volts. Now see, argument is because the germanium and the silicon 
they're in parallel. So the potential drop across germanium and the silicon should be same, but isn't the case. And hence, I thought I should be reviewing this problem once again. This anomaly, if you think so, it could be resolved provided you consider a resistance, forward bias resistance in series with the germanium as well as forward bias resistance in series with the silicon resistor. I have also done a video and the link to this video has been given in the description. Assume this to be R1 and R2. Now let us proceed with the solution taking forward bias resistance R1 of germanium and forward bias resistance R2 of silicon into consideration. We need to complete the current distribution first. Current I is supplied by the battery. It distributes at point X. Current I1 flows through diode D1 and the rest I minus I1 flows through the diode D2. They combine at point Y. So the current flowing through this resistor is I. Now, as the current distribution is complete, now let's apply the Kirchhoff loop rule. The sign convention followed happens to be the algebraic sum of the potential drops in a closed loop is equals to zero. So, consider the loop. A, X, D1, Y, C, D, E, A. In AX part of the loop, there is no element and hence no term. Now, as current flows through the diode, the terms will be 0 0.3 volt for the cut-in voltage plus I1, R1. This is a potential drop across a forward resistance. Then the term plus 1000 I as current flows to the 1000 ohm resistance. Now current enters through the negative terminal and hence minus 10 equals to 0 or 1000i plus i1 r1 equals to 9.7. This is relation number 2. Now consider the loop x d1 y d2x first current flows to d1 and hence 0 0.3 plus i1 r1 now the current flows to diode d2 direction of the loop chosen is opposite to the direction of current and hence we will get minus I minus I1 into R2 then minus 0.7 equals to 0 or minus I R2 plus I1 R1 plus R2 is equals to 0 0.4 and this is relation number 2. We have two equations in two variables i1 and i2. These two equations can be solved simultaneously. Let's do it. 1000i plus i1 r1 is equals to 9.7. Multiply it by r1 plus r2. And the second relation minus i r2 plus I1 R1 plus R2 is equals to 0.4 multiply it by R1. Now subtract. This minus will become plus and here is minus sign and this is also minus sign. This, this term will cancel and let's see that what do we have. We have 
1000 R1 plus R2 plus R1 R2 this got to be R1 bracket close into I and this is equals to 9.7 times R1 plus R2 minus 0.4 times R1 this is further equals to 9.3 R1 plus 9.7 R2 thus the value of current I is equals to 9.3 R1 plus 9.7 R2 divided by 1000 times R1 plus R2 plus R1 R2 this is result number 3 now the potential drop across 1000 ohm resistor will be given by V2 is equals to I multiplied by 1000 or potential of point B minus potential of point C and this is equals to 9.3 R1 plus 9.7 R2 divided by 1000 R1 plus R2 plus R1 R2 this whole should be multiplied by 1000 let's multiply now let us check value of i once again and the value of i is equals to huh, this is perfectly okay potential of point b is same as v naught to be calculated potential of point c is zero and this is equals to 1000 times 9.3 r1 plus 9.7 r2 divided by 1000 R1 plus R2 plus R1 R2 or V0 is equal to 1000 multiplied by 9.3 R1 plus 9.7 R2 divided by 1000 R1 plus R2 plus R1 R2 this should be the required result given the value of v naught we should be able to calculate potential of point b if we choose r1 equals to r2 is equals to 100 ohm then this value v naught will become 1000 multiplied by 9.3 is to 100 plus 9.7 is to 100 divided by 1000 100 plus 100 plus 100 is 200 this is further equals to 1000 multiplied by you take 100 as common and 9.3 and 9.7 that will make 19 divided by you take 100 is 200 as common let's see that what we get this is this is 2 this is 20 plus 1 and from here 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 and this is equals to 190 divided by 21 and this happens to be about 9.04 volt I hope you understand where was the issue. Thank you.